Hello guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary people. In this video, we're going to talk about bit masking, what it is, as well as how and what it is used for. Before we get to talking about bit masking though, we need to talk about bits and bitwise operations in general. So as you might already know, computers process binary data. Binary data is a sequence of bits, and each bit can have one of the two possible values, 1 and 0, hence the name binary. Now, what can we do with binary sequences? Just like we can apply arithmetic operations to regular numbers, we can apply bitwise operations to binary sequences. For example, bitwise AND, bitwise OR, or bitwise XOR. So we have two binary sequences. If we apply the bitwise AND, we will get a third binary sequence, which is created as follows. We compare corresponding bits of both sequences, one by one, and if both bits are set to one, the corresponding bit in the resultant sequence is set to one. And otherwise, it is set to zero. For bitwise OR, if both bits are set to zero, the resultant bit is set to zero. And otherwise, the resultant bit is set to one. For bitwise XOR, the resultant bit is set to one if only one of the two bits is set to one and otherwise, the resultant bit is set to zero. Now, unlike the AND, OR, and XOR, there are also bitwise operations that are performed on just one binary sequence. For example, NOT and SHIFT operators. The bitwise NOT flips each bit of the sequence, meaning if the bit in the original sequence is set to one, the corresponding bit in the resultant sequence is set to zero, and vice versa. And finally, the SHIFT operators. A binary sequence can be shifted left or right by a certain number of places. For example, shifting this binary sequence to the left by, say, 3 will result in the following sequence. Please note that when shifting left, the bits on the right are set to 0. Now, if we shift the same binary sequence to the right by the same three places, we will get a sequence that looks like this. What's important to note here is that what you see on the screen is an example of the logical right shift, which works the same way as the left shift. However, in addition to logical right shift, there's also arithmetic right shift. The difference is that for the arithmetic right shift, instead of setting the bits on the left to zero, the leftmost bit of the original sequence is copied. All right, before we move on to bit masking, to make sure you do understand how bitwise operations work, please pause the video and try to solve these problems. All right, this is what the answer should look like. And if that's what you got, let's move on to bit masking, specifically to creating a bit mask. To understand what a bit mask is, let's look at this list of checkboxes. We can store the value of all checkboxes by using just one binary sequence consisting of four bits. If all checkboxes are off, all four bits are set to zero. If the first checkbox is on, the first bit is set to one. If the third checkbox is checked, the third bit is set to one and so on. What's important to note here is that the bits are numbered right to left, meaning the first bit of the sequence is the rightmost one, which is also called the least significant bit. Now, the most common default size of a bit mask is 32 bits, meaning the actual bit mask for the four checkboxes would look like this. Pretty long, huh? Now, not only is it more annoying to manually type a 32-bit sequence of ones and zeros, it is also error-prone since it's super easy to make a mistake and enable the wrong bit. So is there an easier way to create a bit mask? Yes, there is. For example, we want to set the fourth checkbox on. How do we set the fourth bit to one? For this, we bit shift one to the left by three. So by shifting the rightmost one to the left three times, we get one, zero, 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 which corresponds to the fourth checkbox being on. Now, what if we want to have the second checkbox on? Well, we shift one to the left by one, and we get zero, zero, one, zero. All right, then what if we want to have both the second and the fourth checkboxes on? In this case, we apply the bitwise OR to the individual bit masks. So 0010 OR 1000 results in 1010, which is what we need. All right, so we now know how to create a bit mask, but how do we use it? Let's say we want to check a mask to see whether certain checkboxes are on. Say the mask looks like this, and we want to check if the third checkbox is on. In this case, we apply the AND operation to the overall mask, and the mask that represents the configuration we want to check. For the third checkbox, it looks like this, 0100. So 1101 and 0100 
results in 0100, which is identical to the configuration mask, which in turn means that the third checkbox is on. Now you might be wondering, what's the big deal? Come on, what's so special about bitmasks? If anything, it seems wastefully complicated. Well, while bitmasking is indeed not very intuitive, it does come with some benefits. For one, bitwise operations are generally faster since they are sort of closer to what the computer actually does, which is processing binary data. Also, using bitmasks is more memory efficient. For instance, to track the state of checkboxes as we did before, we could use a Boolean array, where each Boolean value represents the state of the corresponding checkbox. Now, a single 32-bit mask can store states of 32 checkboxes. To do the same thing with a Boolean array, we would need 32 Boolean values. And each Boolean value would take a minimum of 8 bits, depending on the programming language. If you think it's not really a huge deal, well, in many cases that's actually true, but still. Anyways, the bottom line is bit masking is a more efficient way to track binary states. Now, what if you don't really care about efficiency? Do you still need to know how bit masking works? Well, it depends. For example, if you're working with something that uses bit masks, then yeah, you do need to know how bit masking works. One such example is Unity. Unity uses bit masking to create layer masks that can be used for physics related purposes. We do use bit masking in our 8 ball pull project. For example, here, by shifting 1 to the left by 6, we get a mask that corresponds to layer number 6. And then by inverting the mask, we create a mask that targets all layers except layer 6, which in our project is assigned to the game objects that correspond to the physics representation of the pool table. If you want to see other examples of using layer masks in Unity, you can check out our course on Udemy. The link is in the video description. And this is it for this video. See you in the next one. Bye.